everybody. It's Friday and it's our last day of Super CSSM. Can you believe it? Where has the week gone to? But don't worry, there's still plenty of fun to be had on this our last day. So we've still got one more story with Ken. We have another interview to enjoy, lots more songs to sing, and another story from the Bible to hear about. Today we're going to hear about a man called Gideon. And you know what? He didn't need any swords to fight with or any bows and arrows because he knew that God was with him. It's a really great story and I hope you're going to learn lots about it from him. But before we do that, we're going to uh, pray to our Father in Heaven to thank him for the great week that we've had and all the things that he's taught us. And I also want to take this time from all at Scripture Union to thank you for coming along each day and taking part in all our activities. It wouldn't have been the same if you hadn't come. We hope you have enjoyed uh, this week of Super CSSM. Have a great day, but before that, let's pray. Now put your arms out like this, clap above your head, and when you pass your eyes, close your eyes, and when you pass your mouth, close your mouth, and let's pray to God. Dear God, Lord, I thank you so much for today, Lord. I thank you that even though it's not the right circumstances that we wanted to meet for CSM this year, Lord, but that we can meet this year, Lord. And I pray that today would just be an amazing day and that we learn more about you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Show them his love, show his love. We can whisper it, or we can shout it, we can speak it, or we can sing it, we can draw it, or we can paint it. We have to live it, yeah. Shout it out where the people of God.
Oh, hi there. I don't know if you know, but my name is Andrew Schuster. Ah. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Isaac. Would you like to know about my shoes? Um, oh, I guess that's a great question to ask. Tell me a little bit about your shoes. Yeah, maybe you'll get these in sometime. Well, I have this cousin who's a fashion designer and um, he was over one, one time and he was wearing these shoes and I said, oh, they look very nice. Did you buy them or what? And he said, no, I designed them myself. So next time he was over, he actually brought over a pair for me. So yeah, that's the story of how I got them. Yeah. That's fantastic. Here, look, they're nice shoes, but could I entice mm. you with something a bit more green? I don't know, you'd rubbery. have to sell it to me. I don't recognize those kind of shoes. Well, they're great for the countryside. Okay. Farmers love them. Oh, okay. And they're a very popular shoe. Oh, okay, well, I do love farmers. Um, do you know what? Leave it with me, leave it okay, with me. I Maybe will. next time. I will, I will. Yeah. Here, but could you tell me where you like to step out into in your shoes? Where I like to step out into my shoes? Um, I've kind of worn these all over. They're, they've actually, I've almost outgrown them at this stage, so they've had their wear, but they've seen, they've seen the streets of Dublin, the hills of Wicklow, and you know what, that's about it. Fantastic. Here, look, a more serious question. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me about a time where you stepped out in faith? Mm, good question. Um, well, a couple of summers ago, I decided to uh, do some camps in another country, um, kind of like the ones we do here, but you know, it was a completely different place, completely different way of running things, completely different kids, and it was quite overwhelming at the time. And so I kind of had to step out in faith at that time because I came to the realization of how overwhelming it was the night before the first camp started. Nice. So I had no choice but to fully rely on God because I hadn't, you know, I couldn't do it with my own strength at the time. So yeah, that would probably be one situation. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Are you sure you don't want to? You're a really good salesman, you? but I can't imagine it's very functional down here. Don't want to be my first customer. Put a smile on this Please man's face. Please don't guilt me into it. <laughs> Okay, right. Maybe I'll next time. Maybe I'll, I'll come be. by. I'll come by some other time. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep an eye out for you. Yeah. Do. Do. We wanna be real followers. Real followers. Real followers of Jesus. We wanna be real followers. Real followers. So let's build our lives on you. We wanna be. us right with God again. So day by day we want to live for Him. Show the world that Jesus is our King.
how do we find the strength to step out? Like a lot of people, I've taken up running during the lockdown. Problem is, I'm still a bit slow. And I get tired, and each run is still a bit of a challenge to finish. And sometimes it just feels like my legs are too weak to keep me moving forward. All week at Super CSSM, our theme has been Step Out. And we've been looking at true stories in the Bible about people who were walking by faith. But the truth is, moving forward in faith can be difficult. We're still a bit slow in trusting in God's plans for our future. We can tire at serving others and loving God. And sometimes we just feel too weak to keep living as a Christian when everyone around us is just doing what is right in their own eyes. So how do we find the strength to keep moving forward? There is a story in the Bible about a man named Gideon that helps me to move forward in my faith. How? Because it's a story that reminds me that God steps out with me and that I can move forward in his strength. Gideon lived in uh, Israel in a time when the Israelites were being attacked by people called the Midianites. The Midianites were bigger and stronger than them and they kept on coming in and taking their food. How are you? Hey! Hey Ralph, how you like them apples? <laughs> The Bible tells us in Judges chapter 6 that the people of God prayed to God and asked him for help. And God was going to send a mighty hero. He was going to send Gideon to be their rescuer. Now, when you think of a mighty hero, you probably think of somebody that's brave, strong, powerful. Someone that's wise and skilled. Someone that can inspire either. But the thing is, Gideon was none of those things. He was small and weak and scared. And so when God told him that he was going to rescue Israel, Gideon said, but my tribe is the weakest of all and I'm the most at least important in my whole family. But God said, I will be with you. I am going to help you to win. And then later on, it says that the Holy Spirit clothed Gideon in power. You know, in the winter when you're cold and you put on a jacket to warm you up, in the same way, God put his strength around Gideon's weakness. And so in faith, Gideon stepped out to fight against the Midianites. And this is what happened. Gideon got together the biggest army he could, 32,000 men. But God wanted to make sure that Gideon and his people knew that he was the one who was going to sort things out. So he set about making Gideon's army smaller. First, he told Gideon he could send all the scared ones home. No, Gideon, you're not allowed to join them. 22,000 didn't need asking twice. Second, God told Gideon to send the remaining 10,000 soldiers down to the river to drink. 9,700 bent straight down and slurped up the water. Did your mothers teach you nothing? They were sent home too. That left Gideon with just 300 soldiers. Now he would have to trust God to show his power. This isn't going to be easy, Gideon said. Night fell and Gideon got the green light to fight and a bit of a nudge from one of his assistants, Pura, who had just spent a fun-packed evening skulking around the enemy camp, listening to other people's conversations. And it wasn't as if the Midianites were saying puny Gideon and his 300 toy soldiers easy. No, they were worried. One of the guards had had a dream. While he was asleep, he had seen a loaf of bread bouncing down into the camp, scattering the people and the tents as it went. Gideon got his men and armed them with bows and arrows? No. Sticks and stones? No. Swords and other nasty pointy things? No. With a trumpet and a jar with a torch inside. Now you're getting the idea of how far God was prepared to go in order to show his power through Gideon. Just before midnight. Gideon's 300 men blew their trumpets and let the torches burn bright. That was enough for the Midianites. And they panicked. This meant that they fought one another and they ran and they ran. And so Gideon rescued the Israelites and defeated the Midianites. 
Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33 says it was by faith that Gideon conquered the Midianites. Gideon knew that by himself he would not have been able to win the battle but he trusted that God was with him. He did what he was told, believing that God would give him all the strength that he needed. And clothed in God's power, he stepped out to rescue Israel. And God helped us step out too. Even though we might feel too small or weak to face the battles that are coming our way. But if we trust in God, he will give us the strength that we need. Sometimes in life, the opposition is really great. And sometimes we just feel so weak against it. But instead of looking at the strength of what stands against us or our own weakness, realize who is on our team. Because if God is with us, if his strength and his power is with us, then we can win the battles. When we step out in faith, we've got somebody even stronger than Iron Man helping us. And the Bible is full of stories where God fights battles for people that they could never win by themselves. Most importantly, we see this in the story of Jesus on the cross. Our biggest enemy in life is sin, which separates us from the love of God. And by ourselves, it's a battle that we lose every time. But on the cross, Jesus fights the battle for us. And through his death and resurrection, he conquers the power of sin. And by faith, we can be forgiven and rescued from the fear of death. So today, it doesn't matter if you feel small because God is a big God. It doesn't matter if you are weak because God is strong and powerful. It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up because God is love. Whatever these next few months may bring, whatever battles are on our way, if we're trusting in God, He is with us and His help is only a prayer away. The Spirit is ready to clothe us in the strength of Jesus. And if Jesus was powerful enough to step out of the grave, then we can move forward in our faith in His strength. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you love us And we thank you that through Jesus, you can give us the strength that we need to move forward in faith. So Father, we pray that today we would know that you are a big God, that you are a strong God, and that you are full of love, and that you will help us to step out to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord your God is a faithful God. He will keep His promise of love forever for everyone who has love for Him and obeys His commands. What a promise, a promise He's promised to keep. A promise of truth. Your God is a faithful 
Ah, there mm -hmm. you are. Shh. Do you hear that? I think that's Hosier. He lives across the fields from here. Have you ever heard him live? He's amazing. He, I've heard him so many times. But you know what? Wouldn't it be a bit odd if it was just him on the stage? There's really a team behind him, isn't there? There's the guy who does the lights, or the lady who looks after the microphones. There's a whole team. Just to hear him singing wouldn't work. When we look at the Bible, we look at it in English, and we're able to read it in our own language. But there was a whole team that it took to make that happen. A long time ago, very few people had a Bible of their own. And the Bibles that were available were only written in the ancient language called Latin. You and I can have as many Bibles as we like these days in our own language. But at one time, it was illegal to have a Bible in English. Of course, in some parts of the world, it's still against the law to have a Bible. But imagine, in our part of the world, it was illegal to have a Bible in English. William Tyndale wanted to change that. He wanted to make sure that everybody could have a copy of the Bible that they could read for themselves. Of course, you know that he succeeded in making this happen, but it was difficult. After all, someone had to have the time and the space to spend translating it from Latin to English and then to check it and to get it all ready for printing and publishing. It was more than a full-time job. If someone was going to give up work and spend the time to do this, who was going to make sure they could pay their rent, buy food, and all those other things that people have to go to work for? William Tyndale said that people knew about the Bible, but they couldn't know the Bible unless they had the Bible for themselves. So he set about translating the New Testament so that everybody could have a copy and could understand it. His name has become famous for Bible translation. But there are other people whose names aren't so well known, but they were equally important to the work. Not many people know about a man called Henry Monmouth. He was a businessman who paid all the bills for Tyndale. When it became unsafe for Tyndale to continue his work in England, Monmouth paid for him to travel to Germany. Without Henry Monmouth paying the bills, William Tyndale could not have done his great work. But there were lots of other people without whom Tyndale could not have done the work. Remember that an English Bible was illegal. So even when the Bible was translated and printed in Germany where Tyndale was hiding, there were still important jobs to be done. There were still other people whose names we don't know who were important to this work. People were needed to pack the Bibles and smuggle them back then lots of men and women had to make sure that these Bibles could be distributed. Tyndale and all of these other men and women were all equally important in making sure that the Bible was available to everyone. You don't have to be the leader to be important. God has a very important role for you to play on his team. It's important that you do that. <laughs>